Welcome to Trending in Education. Mike Palmer here, excited today to be joined by Dawn Rodney, who is the Chief Innovation and Growth Officer at the National Wildlife Federation. She's also the publisher of Ranger Rick Jr., who's celebrating his 10th birthday, uh, which is exciting. Lots to talk about in the world of nature and nature education. And Dawn wears many hats. We're going to talk to her about Lots of different stuff. But before we do that, Dawn, I just want to welcome you to Trending in Education. Thanks so much, Mike. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. So we always love to begin our conversation by asking our guests to tell us their origin story, what got you to this point in your professional life. Spin us a yarn, tell us a tale, what got you to this point in your career? Oh my gosh, it's not that interesting a story, Mike, but I'll tell it anyway. I spent most of my career in television, about 25 years working at both local stations as well as actually during the emergence of cable. I was at the early days of Animal Planet helping to grow that channel as well as Discovery Health before I made my way over to National Geographic. Mm -hmm. About 12 years at National Geographic Channels, and then I moved over to the society where I, I led the global brand for that organization mm. and I, across our different platforms and with all our different businesses, our science and our education teams. And then I kind of followed my heart and I have always loved wildlife conservation, as you can tell by the, the narrative arc of my career, you know, going from Animal Planet to National Geographic. It's always been a passion of mine and I made my way over to the National Wildlife Federation. Mm -hmm. My role is Chief Innovation and Growth Officer. It's actually a really unusual role for a nonprofit. My job is really to find those opportunities and solutions and innovative solutions that help us achieve our mission, but also help drive revenue so that we can continue to achieve our mission. Yeah. And Ranger Rick is one of those, as well as several other businesses, as well as marketing, communications, digital, some of those other areas are part of the work that I do. That's fantastic. And we'll get into Ra Ranger Rick next, but before we do that, can you just catch folks up quickly on the National Wildlife Federation, what it is and what the mission is, just in case folks aren't familiar? Sure. I, it is an incredible organization that does amazing, amazing work, both at the grassroots level, within communities, within uh, states, and nationally. We are a federation of affiliates. We have 52 affiliates across the U.S. We have about 15 million members and supporters, people who love wildlife and really want to help wildlife. And, you know, really everything we do is driven to ensure that wildlife thrive in this world that obviously is rapidly changing in many, many different ways. Yeah, makes sense. And then Ranger Rick is in part the liaison to the rising generations. You know, I have a, a three-year-old who is really starting to consume a lot of content and it all tends to involve furry animals for some reason. So Ranger Rick <laughs> is true to that history. And now this is Ranger Rick Jr., I believe. Can you catch us up on the Ranger Rick narrative and how it factors into what you're doing at the National Wildlife Federation? Absolutely. Ranger Rick has been part of National Wildlife Federation for 55 years now. This will be the 55th year. It started as a book back in 1959 that really engaged kids around wildlife conservation. And it was the origin story of Rick, who was a, a typical raccoon that ended up deciding that he wanted to do something to help the deep green wood where he lived and rallied all his friends to be able to do it. Soon after that, in the 60s, National Wildlife Federation decided to launch this kids' magazine. It stayed a kids' magazine that really engaged kids starting at around age seven until 10 years ago when the organization recognized that, you know, we could start engaging kids much younger, mm -hmm. seven. And that's where Ranger Rick Jr. really was born out of or inspired out of. And then we also have the Cub Magazine which starts engaging kids from the time they're born. So education work and the edutainment work that we do through Ranger Rick, it really starts when a kid is born and goes all the way through our 
formal education work through the time that they're deciding on careers and hopefully careers within environmental education or environmental sciences. Mm -hmm. It's a fabulous magazine and we're so excited that Ranger Rick Jr. is had such success in engaging kids across the country in, in the last 10 years. Yeah. And, and you can see as a parent, you can see the impact to a kid. You know, when I take Matthew to the park or, you know, he sees animals, it's just a natural thing for us as humans to want to engage with these things. And then in light of the pandemic, I think a lot of us have been more careful about indoor spaces and have been looking to engage in nature, to engage with wildlife. You know, there's even been research about how it's important for us to flourish and thrive as humans to be outside. Absolutely. It's so critical for people of every age, but especially children to be getting outside. We know from our social science that when kids have regular, very positive outside experiences with a trusted adult, that they actually will connect more to nature, have a greater understanding, greater care, and then want to take care of it and help protect it. So it's really important to the work of the National Wildlife Federation to start helping kids connect at the earliest ages possible. And there's just so many benefits to being outside, as you were saying, the, the mental, the emotional, the physical. It's all about helping kids be the best they can be, but also connect them to the outdoors so that eventually, you know, as they grow older, they want to be great stewards of the environment. Yeah. And this is an education show. Our listeners care about education. You know, you hit one of my, one of my buzzwords that I love edutainment. There's a lot of entertaining education that you're putting out to the world about nature, about wildlife, about how kids can start to engage at an early age. Where, where would a parent or an educator go if they wanted to see what the, the National Wildlife Federation has going on? Well, there's two different components. So if we're talking about Ranger Rick, absolutely go to rangerick.org because not only do we have wonderful digital experiences, and I can talk a little bit about what we're doing with Ranger Rick Jr. and his birthday and how we're celebrating because we're starting to merge those different platforms in a really fascinating way. Yeah. But either a parent or an educator wants to go. We provide educator guides for each one of our issues. There are also articles in Spanish. We always pick with Ranger Rick Jr. one article a month to provide in Spanish. And we also just have a lot of games and a lot of activities that really can help inspire and engage kids at multiple developmental stages. Yeah. And on the formal education side with our team, which they do an amazing job. We have a network of about 15,000 schools across the U.S. and reach about 8 million students wow. ready and engage with about 450,000 educators. So there's a lot of materials that are, you can find on our website. There's a lot of curriculum-based materials that you can use. We have programs like Eco Schools through K through 12. We have School your habitats, where we really help both educators work with outdoors. You were talking earlier, Mike, about outdoor education, really helping create habitats in their schoolyards that are both helping wildlife, but also helping kids understand the environment a little bit more. Mm -hmm. We have other wonderful programs, too. We have a Earth Tomorrow program that is really engaging students in the Atlanta area. We have ECHO, which is Early Childhood Health Outdoors Program, which is nature play, working with preschools and daycares to create outdoor play spaces. That's currently in our Colorado region. Mm. Uh, we are working to offer that across the country. So lots of ways that both parents and educators can engage with the organization, whether it's through the edutainment side of uh, Ranger Rick or through the formal education side. That makes sense. And then Ranger Rick is turning 10. I don't know if there's a Ranger Rick the third on the way so that <laughs> we'll have to get his act together. But what are we doing yeah. to celebrate Ranger Rick Jr.'s birthday? I know you got a lot cooking in the coming weeks and months. Yeah, you know, we are just so excited. He's turning 10. This is little Ricky and and all his pals. You know, what we've realized is that, you know, we, we've spent a lot of time thinking about how kids interact with their worlds today. And that inspired us to do this really unique and special thing for Ranger Rick Jr.'s birthday, which is 
merging the experience between platforms. Mm. You know, the child gets their magazine in the mail. I have one of the magazines in my hands right now. Yeah. They provided QR codes and each QR code, we, we wanted to create a birthday celebration that extended both print and connected the dots to, to digital platforms. Yeah. So you can go with a QR code and you can do different activities. You can find out what animal you are. You can do puzzles. You can do matching programs. You could play a Kahoot game, which we love Kahoot. Yeah. Sure. My favorite, one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. You can also send uh, Ranger Rick Jr. a birthday card. And we've already gotten our first birthday card from a little girl named Adeline, um, who's six years old. She already sent it to us. And kids today, just they, they're co-creators. They want to be able to contribute. They want to be able to engage in a bigger way than just reading or writing. They want to actually help create things. So a lot of the work we were doing with Major Junior was to how do you extend that experience seamlessly? Because as you know, with your three-year-old, like their worlds, their digital natives, their world platforms just are part of their life and move really seamlessly between those platforms. And we wanted to take that idea and capture it in the experience that we were creating for Ranger Rick Jr. Yeah. We have things we, zoos around the country were amazing, Mike. They, they sent us these wonderful videos wishing Ranger Rick Jr. A happy birthday with their different animals mm -hmm. went so far and above our expectations. We were so thrilled with um, what they did for us. And then we're also doing read alongs, being able to take the stories from Ranger Rick Jr. and have folks read to our audience and just extend, again, extend that experience to a different platform. So Ranger Rick's turning 10, which is exciting, but there's plenty more on the horizon. You got lots of vision for where this is going. What's happening next for Ranger Rick? What do you see in the future? Oh, Mike, we are so excited because we are out talking to distributors right now about a Ranger Rick TV series. And we are so excited about it because we think it is a way to both entertain, but also engage kids in conservation issues. The focus of the first season is around the monarch migration and brings to life Ranger Rick and his friends in a way that folks have never seen before. So we're super excited. Yeah, that's exciting. The monarch migration is something that continues to blow my mind. I just can't believe that mm -hmm. that actually happens. And that's something I'll certainly want to be tracking. And we may need to go deeper on that in a subsequent episode. It's been fascinating as a parent, uh, you know, the other day there was like a bug thing we were doing with Matthew, just trying to teach him about bugs. And then it occurred to me, we haven't watched a bug's life together and getting him to watch anything other than Paw Patrol these days is a struggle. And I was like, that <laughs> might actually work, but it was, your point is well taken. It's like more uh, blending and cross mm -hmm. modality. That's, it also did make me start thinking even about virtual reality where that's right all this stuff is going to continue to emerge as someone who's been in some cutting edge and edutainment spaces for some time, any perspective on, on where we go next? You know, there's both the short term and the long term, Mike, we were just talking to parents last fall and I still think parents are very concerned about screen time. Mm -hmm. and I do think that things like podcasts, like what you do are really critical to the near term future for kids and really engaging them through voice and mm -hmm. th through audio uh, alone, because kids can, parents see that as an alternative to screen time. Yes. I think it's going to grow in more and more importance in the near future. I do think there's something really fascinating about the metaverse. And I don't know what that looks like, but, you know, you were saying how virtual reality and you look at what Roblox has been able to do or other gaming platforms and how kids can start creating communities. You look at Animal Jam, oh. create community in this virtual worlds that are really fascinating. I, I wish I could imagine what that looks like. I am paying very close attention to that. I'm also paying close attention to artificial intelligence because mm -hmm. kids today, you know, Alexa and other devices are part of their life and they have a say in the world that they live in. And I think they have much more of a command and control over things. So all of those kind of really interesting technologies 
play a role in a kid's life. And as we think about, honestly, about Ranger Rick, part of the work that we're trying to do is figure out how to be part of a kid's life, no matter where they are. Mm -hmm. How do we use technology as a power for good and to be able to help educate, but also get kids outside. So how can we use technology to inspire them and get them out? So those are what's kind of out there, but being able to bring it together in a way that is really engaging kids and inspiring them is our biggest challenge, honestly. Yeah. And it, it is interesting too, when you think about the power of a coloring book and some crayons, you know, publishing a magazine, having something physically in a parent or a child's hand, uh, and then being able to carry something outside of a, a physical space when you were talking about creating those habitats for learning. Mm -hmm. That sounds like, like amazing work. I also know from a mission-based perspective that there's also work you're doing to ensure that folks who maybe traditionally don't feel safe outside and don't have access to these types of, you know, habitats for learning. Can you talk a little more about that side of the work that you're doing? Absolutely. So we spend a lot of time and have dedicated a lot of the programmatic work we do to really ensuring the safety of people of color in engaging with the outdoors. So we're doing a lot of work through Honestly Policy, uh, a lot of the policy work we're doing, but we're also engaging with communities around the country. So Earth Tomorrow is a perfect example of that, where we've been, it's actually just celebrated its 20th anniversary. And where we've been engaging youth in Atlanta and really helping to connect them with the outdoors through different types of experiences and ensuring that that work and ensuring that the experience they have are as positive and safe as possible. We also have partnerships with different companies and we have one with Bass Pro where we engage kids right now. In different communities, we're in partnership with the YMCA after school program. And we do everything from helping the after school educators to be safe outdoors as well. You have to make sure that your educators feel safe first and help them uh, get comfortable with the outdoors and get comfortable with doing things like hiking or fishing or camping and then be able to engage the kids in that way too. So we actually do a year long program with YMCA's after school programs across the country in partnership with Bass Pro. So there's lots of different things that, that we do, but all of it is really to uh, encourage all people uh, to be outside. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, the websites are rangerrig.org and nwf.org. They're doing interesting stuff over there. I did see photo contests, both on the NWF proper, uh, which is more like nature, wildlife photography, and then similar stuff on rangerrick.org, uh, yeah. engaging with the kids who are taking pictures. And, you know, I, I live in Brooklyn, had it not been for a lot of the activity around Prospect Park and some of the great engagement that you can get through the zoo there and through the activities that are powered there, it really is something that it was always good for us. And now I think there's more awareness of how central these outdoor spaces can be for our own thriving really in the, in these challenging times. As we're getting closer to conclusion, Don, any other topics or ideas that we haven't gotten to that you wanted to make sure we spent a, a few minutes on? I'd love to put a plug in for another initiative that we have that has led with my group, which is called the Green Hour. Mm. And if folks go to thegreenhour.org, then um, there's all kinds of activities that parents or grandparents or educators can also do with their kids outside. There's a wonderful activity right now about Groundhog Day. We do it for all seasons. So there's always an activity that folks can do. So I want to put a plug in that. And we also just want to remind folks, you know, Ranger Rick is an amazing character. He is the hero and the champion for all wildlife. I think kids want to make a difference today. We hear a lot from kids that engage with us, whether through our school programs or through Ranger Rick, that they have this wonderful sense of social responsibility. And I think Ranger Rick is a wonderful way that kids can help learn how they can protect wildlife and actually go out and do something about it. Mm -hmm. 
that is some of the magic of what is happening with Ranger Rick as well as Ranger Rick Jr. and Cub as we start engaging kids from their earliest days, really getting them to have this wonderful sense of how I can help, how can I make a difference in the world and provide them those opportunities through the educational materials and the activities and the work that we do and the stories that we tell. Yeah, absolutely. And I think parents now, because this brand's been around for a while too. There are ways in which generations can stay connected and uh, who doesn't in enjoy engaging with a playful character, engage in some learning, get your kid activated, get outside. It's all good things, Dawn. Thanks Thank so you. much for, for joining us today on Trending in Education. Thanks so much, Mike. It's been so fun to talk to you and please stay warm up there in New York. We will, we will. And hopefully our listeners are warm, but not too hot. Thanks as always for listening. If you like what you're hearing, subscribe, write us a review, share the good word. We'll be back again soon. This is Trending in Education. <laughs>